Hi guys, I'm Brian Latimer. Today we're going to talk about something that I'm really interested in and has always intrigued my fascination with fishing lures. And that is color and lure selection and what bass actually see. question do bass see color do they really see what we see when we hold bait up to the light do they see the same things that we see and just to get to the point bass do see color I'm gonna show you a few things in this segment that'll show you why you need to be really selective about the colors you use so one thing that's always been intriguing to me is there are a lot of colors with the technology that we have out there nowadays we can match a hatch almost perfectly. If we want a bait that looks exactly like a thread fin shad, we can match that almost to a T to the point where the human eye can't even tell the difference. Um, if we're trying to, to, to match a specific brim color or uh, some type of crustacean or crawdad, we can match those colors almost to a T. But what I've noticed in my experience on the water, a lot of those colors that are matched exactly perfect are not nearly as, as productive as, as just a simple pearl with a, with a dark back or a simple green pumpkin. Or um, sometimes, you know, it's really popular now. I live on a, a very clear Highland Reservoir and we use a lot of pinks. Pink doesn't look like anything in nature to me. Um, and I've always been interested to know why do those baits work? Why do those baits that have, that look absolutely like nothing else, why do they still produce fish when we have baits that that match colors almost to a T, but they're not near as productive. And that's what's really triggered my research on why certain colors work. And a long story short, colors have more to do about contrast than they do actually matching the hatch when we're talking about bass fishing. Bass are not really that particular about matching the hatch. They're really more sight feeders on contrast. A bait that contrasts against a certain bottom if we're throwing a top water, whatever bait contrasts the best, typically gets the bite. A bass's eye is composed somewhat like the human eye. It has rods and cones. The cones see colors and the rods actually pick up shades of gray and black. The way lures look underwater is drastically different than what they look like above water. Of course, a lot of times We'll hold a bait up in the air and say, man, that looks just like a brim, or that looks just like a shad, that looks like just like a crawdad. Um, but we're really not aware of what baits look like underwater. And the reason those baits look different underwater is one reason. Light filters out some of the colors once a bait goes under the water, okay? The water column actually filters out some of the wavelengths of colors. So with that being said, the deeper we go, the more water there is and the more that the water filters out the colors on our base. So, for instance, reds are the first colors to dissipate in the water column. Reds actually turn to a light gray or black depending on how, how deep of water we're fishing in. Those are the first colors to go. Orange will be next. Those colors fade faster. All we're working to blue. Blue is the, the most resilient color. Blue looks exactly the same and 20 foot of water as it does in three foot of water. Here's a chart explaining how light penetration affects colors at different depths of water. You'll notice by this chart that red is absorbed first and green is absorbed last. You'll also notice the deeper we go, the less light there is. Therefore, it affects your colors accordingly. Without the presence of light energy, our colors lose their vibrance. 
The deeper we go in the water column, the less light there is. In the chart, you'll notice that reds are affected the most by the absence of light, while greens and yellows aren't affected as much, and their vibrance stays closest to the same. Now, on the contrary, when we're fishing in very clear water, in very shallow water, a fish is going to use its cones much more fluently. So, color is going to be very much more important. When we're fishing in clear water, detail is a little bit more important. You're either going to depend on solid colors, or you're going to depend on colors that are very, very bright to grab a fish's attention. You know, I talked about the pinks, and you know, another very, very important color, no matter what bait you're using, is going to be chartreuse. Chartreuse has proven to be a great color, and I've always wondered, why does that stimulate bass to bite it? You know, chartreuse works really good in clear water as well. Now, when we use it in clear water, the reason it works is because it looks exactly the same from a distance as it does when a bass's nose right up against it. So it stimulates a bass's curiosity. He goes over there and he sees it from the distance. It looks exactly chartreuse from a distance and he gets over close to it. It looks exactly the same and it converts it to a strike. So that's why a lot of times smallmouth, they really, really like bright colors. All the chartreuses, pinks, really bright colors. And that's the reason why they look the same from a distance when it actually stimulates his curiosity and he responds to it once he actually gets over there and looks at the bait, he goes up, picks it up and construct and converts that actual response to a strike. So that explains why chartreuse has always been a good producer and always will be a good producer no matter what the water clarity. To confirm some of my research and findings, I talked with Z-Man Fishing's Glenn Young, the National Sales Director, to get his perspective on his background from fly fishing for salmon and trout in rivers. Now Glenn grew up trout fishing and salmon fishing in rivers, and those fish are a lot more particular when it comes to colors. Even being so, the way Glenn's approach to it is, is very simple. He's not as concerned about patterns like a lot of times we are as bass fishermen. He's only concerned about is it going to be big, small, light or dark. Those are the biggest contributing factors of the, what colors we need to use no matter what the depth or the water clarity is. Is it going to be big? Is it going to be small? Is it going to be dark? Or is it going to be light? Those are the most important factors. Now that we know what colors are most available during low light conditions as well as bright conditions, let's put some of that knowledge to practical use. Water clarity is often the deciding factor in how much light penetrates the surface of the water. With that being said, detailed patterns and combinations are of less importance being the fish are dependent on contrast rather than colors or patterns. In dark water and low light conditions, colors like black, June bug, green pumpkins, and shades of violets and blues give the best contrast and I've personally found to be the best producers. In contrast, in very clear water or very shallow water, bass are much more aware of color and patterns and actual hues of the baits that we use. In clear water or very shallow water, we can stimulate a strike response with color alone. In a clear or shallow water situation, I typically lean towards natural colors. Colors like green pumpkins, watermelons, smokes, the colors that I always start with when I'm using soft plastics. With hard baits, I almost always lean towards shad patterns with pearl bellies or blue backs. In a clear water situation, I really like to use bright colors a lot as well. Bright reds, fluorescent pinks, oranges, chartreuses are often good producers in clear water and shallow water as well. With so many color choices available to fishermen nowadays, choosing the correct color can actually be a little bit intimidating. And with some practice, it'll become second nature. I'm Brian Latimer. Thanks for taking time to watch this video. I hope you guys learned something. Make sure you tune in next Thursday for a brand new video on how to make you become a better fisherman.